Welcome to another episode of United for a Healthy Stoughton. My name is Stephanie Patton and I'm the Prevention Coordinator for the Town of Stoughton. And today we actually are going to have a special episode. I have with me here in the studio, Mary Cole, who is the Program Coordinator for the Greater Boston Tobacco-Free Community Partnership. I got it. Good job. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually going to turn the studio over to Mary and she's gonna do a presentation about vaping, which is very similar to one that we provided for parents at the middle school recently. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually, I'm gonna do a couple of slides about sort of what we know about what's happening in Stone with our own young people and electronic cigarettes and vaping, and then I'm gonna let Mary take it away. So um, if we could pull up, yep, perfect. Um, so we, we are very concerned about vaping here in Stoughton as um, we are in most of the Commonwealth. Um, our vaping rates are higher than a lot of our other substance use among students. This is an emerging trend. Um, and while we know that most kids are not vaping um, and that is hopeful, we are really concerned about those that are. So this slide shows our middle school data and you can see that um, if we look at lifetime use, which means kids who have ever experimented with drugs, we have 9% um, of our students are reporting that they have ever experimented with um, electronic cigarettes. You can see that that's so much higher than cigarettes, which is the number there in red. Um, we also have data from our high school. This is um, lifetime use from high school students. The orange bar represents Stoughton High School. And so you can here again see the comparison of electronic cigarettes with alcohol and marijuana. The blue bars are our state comparison rates. So you can see where we sort of fall in line with the state of Massachusetts. Um, their data is two years behind what we've collected. So my guess would be if we were to look at um, 2019 data, once that's available, um, we probably are likely to be trending slightly below the state, which is good news, but you can see that 43% of our high school students have um, experimented at least with electronic cigarettes in their lifetime. And, um, and that's a pretty concerning number. I think, is that my last slide? Uh, nope, I got one more. Um, this is our 30-day use rate. So this is current use of um, electronic cigarettes compared to other tobacco products. And so you can see that um, there's something different about um, vaping and electronic cigarettes that is more appealing to our young people than traditional cigarettes and cigarillos and chewing tobacco. And Mary's gonna show you some products and talk about why that might be the case. So I am gonna turn things over to Mary and um, thanks for being with us today. Yes, thank you for having me. And right, take it away. Sure. Um, so I'm gonna get started just kind of by emphasizing what Stephanie was saying, how this is e-cigarette use among our young people. It's really an epidemic at this point, and the Surgeon General has said that. Um, and so by starting, I kind of wanna compare that to cigarette use among our young people. Um, and so if we bring it to the slide here, um, Reducing cigarette use among our young people in Massachusetts has actually been one of public health's biggest successes. Um, so you can see in this data that from 1995, about 35% of high schoolers in Massachusetts actually smoke cigarettes. Um, and watch that red line just decrease. Um, and so from a public health perspective, um, we, what we did to, do, to um, reduce cigarette use is we put in a lot of policies. There's the smoke-free workplace policy where you can't smoke in restaurants and bars and where you work. We increase, we tax cigarettes um, to make it unaffordable. And we've really just changed the social norms about that. Um, and so kind of as we're seeing cigarette use disappear, almost disappear among our young people, um, e-cigarettes emerged. Um, and so we have about um, one in five young people in Massachusetts um, using e-cigarettes. And it's just really interesting because these young people, they don't see e-cigarettes as anything comparable to cigarettes. They think it's safer, they think it's cooler. Um, but in reality, how, what I'm gonna talk about too as we move on um, is e-cigarettes these vape products are really disguising nicotine, this addictive feature, um, in this cool, trendy design. Um, and this, this slide is just emphasizing how one in five high schoolers in Massachusetts have used e-cigarettes in the past 30 days, um, compared to 6% for cigarettes. Um, and then we have our middle schoolers. So we know we saw Stoughton middle school data 
um, but in middle schools across Massachusetts from 2017, we had about one in 10 um, students who have ever tried e-cigarettes. And really this um, e-cigarette concern among middle schoolers, is, I'm hearing from middle schools that this is a big concern, that it's, in, it's something um, the schools want to bring attention to. It's a problem there. All right, so right now we're going to bring you guys, um, I'm going to show you guys some products um, because it is pretty confusing of, you know, what these different products are. They all look so differently. Um, you know, how do we use them? Um, so this, is, this piece is really just for you guys to identify um, what these products look like um, so you know if your kids are using them or what other people are using them. And then we're going to go into more detail about um, why these products are harmful as well. Um, so here's just a wide variety of e-cigarettes. These um, can look like USB drives. They can look like pens. They can look like highlighters. A lot of them, they really look like school supplies. Um, and we're even seeing some that can mimic um, typical tobacco products as well. Um, and so these products, like I said, they all can look really, really different, but they all operate in the same way um, through a battery that heats up these metal coils and that atomizer that um, those metal coils then heat up this, this liquid, this e-liquid or e-juice that we talk about um, that has the nicotine and these other chemicals. Um, and then it's just inhaled through that mouthpiece there. Um, so overall, vaping, um, it's really inhaling and exhaling an aerosol. That's sometimes, that's really called vapor, but it is an aerosol. I'm going to emphasize that throughout this presentation. Um, and so you're inhaling this through a battery-operated device. Um, so something that's really important for parents to know is that these products, they're not just called e-cigarettes. They can be called vapes. They can be called e-cigs. Um, e-hookahs, um, mods, tanks, um, electronic nicotine delivery systems or ENDS, but that's typically used by healthcare professionals. Um, and more importantly, we're seeing people, um, especially young people, refer to brand names, for example, Juul. Um, so I'll be talking a bit about Juul as well, but Juul is a very popular brand of e-cigarettes. And a lot of young people that use Juul um, they wouldn't say they use an e-cigarette. They don't think Juul's an e-cigarette, um, though Juul is an e-cigarette. Um, and to emphasize this as well, e-cigarettes, kids don't say they use e-cigarettes. That's for old people. Um, so instead, they're juuling or they're vaping. So what is in these e-liquids and e-juices? What exactly are you inhaling? Um, so there's typically around four ingredients, likely more, that are in these products. Um, so we know that there's nicotine, um, there's propylene glycol, there's vegetable glycerin, and then there's food flavorings as well. Um, so these can come um, in these little bottled devices that you can put in um, those, those vaping devices. Um, and they can also come in these pods that already have that e-liquid in there. And once um, you're done with that pot, you just throw the whole pot out and you get a new one. Um, so something that's really important for everyone to know about um, these e-liquids is currently they are not regulated by the FDA. Um, so this is just an example I like to show. Um, on the front, that zero, it says that um, this e-liquid has zero nicotine. Um, the warning, it even says this product does not contain nicotine. And then let's look at that last ingredient in there. That last ingredient is nicotine. Um, and so this is just to emphasize how um, these products aren't regulated by the FDA. So a lot of products that say they don't have nicotine, they actually do have nicotine. And the CDC says that 99% of e-cigarettes have nicotine in them. Um, so very quickly, there's a lot of different types of e-cigarettes. Um, I'm going to show some here that I have as well. Um, so disposable e-cigarettes are kind of what we saw in the beginning. Um, and these already have the e-liquid in them. They're pre-charged. You throw them out when you're done. Um, these vape pens um, that look like this that have that glass, 
Um, they are typically used for marijuana or that the liquid version of marijuana, the THC oil. Um, so that's something to be mindful of that these vape products, they, they do, um, you can vape other substances besides e-liquids, like marijuana is something popular. Um, next, we're seeing these tank systems. So when you think of vaping originally, you think of these tank and mod systems, so these bigger systems. Um, and these ones produce bigger clouds. Um, people might have been, you know, um, doing playing games with the clouds you know doing designs with them as well and then finally we have these rechargeable e-cigarettes or mod pods what we like to call them um, like the jewel um, so actually if you i don't know if you guys can look on the laptop at all um, but i do have a jewel um, that is here just charging in this laptop um, I don't know if you guys can zoom out. Yeah, so you can actually plug the jewel right into the laptop and it can charge. And so that's what we're seeing with these rechargeable e-cigarettes that, that you can charge them through the USB. Um, and you know, these are really sleek um, products that kids really, really like um, and people like. Um, so a little bit more about Juul. Um, Juul has the majority of the e-cigarette market um, and what Juul did is they really perfected um, getting that nicotine to your head. So they perfected that head rush, um, that nicotine buzz that you feel. Um, and that's because Juul uses this uh, nicotine salt. Um, and the nicotine salt actually helps absorb the nicotine a lot faster than traditional e-cigarettes, which are free-based typically. Um, Juul really has taken over schools. Um, it's, it's what we hear from really all schools across the Commonwealth. Schools are saying, um, youth are, use, are calling bathrooms the Juul Lounge, um, the Juul Room. So, so Juul is something um, that kind of really made e-cigarettes popular among young people. There's lots of flavors as well. Um, and so something to really highlighted about Juul is that it has an insane amount of nicotine in there. Um, just that little Juul pod um, is equivalent to, the nicotine in there is equivalent to one pack of cigarettes or 20 cigarettes. And it's actually likely more um, nicotine that is in that, that little pod. So um, actually compared to the European Union, um, if we have in my slide as well, the European Union um, actually has a maximum amount of nicotine that is allowed. Um, and Juul actually has about three times the legal limit that's allowed in the EU. Um, so I just really want to emphasize that Juul has a high, high amount of nicotine that um, can get to your, that you can feel very quickly to get this rush um, that feels good. That, that's something about Juul that people like. You feel that nicotine similar to a cigarette. You get that rush. It feels good. Um, so that's why people keep coming back to it. Um, and then they keep coming back due to the addiction piece as well. Um, and I also want to highlight that while Juul is something that is really appealing and, and used by a lot of people right now, there's always new and emerging products. Um, so some that I have here with me as well um, is the Suron Drop. I mean, it looks like a highlighter or an eraser, it feels good in your hand. Um, and we also have, I actually don't know what this is called, but this was confiscated from a school. Um, so, you know, we're always seeing these new, pro new products um, that are different ways to deliver this nicotine. So something that's concerning about e-cigarettes um, used with young people is that they have no idea what's really in their products. Most people think it's just flavoring. They think it's water and they think it's flavoring. Um, so this survey was done about a year ago, so I, I do think there's been more education now where more people are aware that Juul um, does have nicotine in it, but there really is this misperception going around that, you know, it's just flavoring, it's, it's just water, um, and that is not true. So what's, what's, so I talked about what's in the e-liquids, those chemicals, um, so what happens when you heat up those, those chemicals and you inhale them? Um, so this picture is really what this, the Centers for Disease Control says. 
um, comes out of these products. Um, so again, this is an aerosol. What is produced is an aerosol, it's not water vapor. So I don't wanna say vapor anymore, I'm gonna call it an aerosol. Um, so that aerosol, it has cancer-causing chemicals. Um, we know that research shows propylene glycol when it's heated up to this level that it, it uh, creates formaldehyde, a carcinogen. Um, there's a bunch of others we've found in here as well, along with heavy metals like nickel, tin, and lead, volatile organic compounds. Um, these ultrafine particles can stick deep into the lungs as well. Um, we also know that those food flavorings, like diacetyl, um, that they are not safe. So diacetyl um, is a common food flavoring um, that is actually linked to something called popcorn lung, um, which is an irreversible scarring of the lungs. Um, so again, this stuff is not safe by any means for anyone to be using. Um, but the problem is we don't have long-term research on what happens when you heat with this aerosol in your lungs. Um, so that is something difficult. There is more and more emerging research that is coming out, but still we don't, we can't say that this is gonna give you lung cancer and COPD and this and that, like cigarettes, um, because it's, it hasn't been around long enough. Um, but the one thing that we do know a lot about is nicotine. Um, so nicotine, as I said, in these e-cigarettes, they're in about 99% of these e-cigarettes, according to the CDC. Um, and nicotine is highly addictive. It can be as addictive as um, heroin or co cocaine. It's something that's very, very addictive, especially for young people. Um, so we know that nine out of 10 um, adult smokers, they actually started smoking before their 18th birthday. So that's 90% of adult smokers um, started before their 18th birthday. And that just shows how uniquely sensitive um, the adolescent brain is to nicotine addiction. Um, we also know that people who start smoking um, or using these tobacco products in adoles adolescence, um, oh, I'm sorry, um, we, I was reading my slide wrong. We also know that those who use, um, youth who use e-cigarettes are about four times more likely to go on to using um, traditional combustible tobacco products like cigarettes, um, which is very concerning, especially from the beginning of my slide. Um, of my slides when I talked about how people don't really use cigarettes anymore. Um, so, so that's a really a big concern with e-cigarettes. So what else with e-cigarettes in young people? Um, we know that adolescent brain is still developing. Um, the brain doesn't develop until the mid-20s. And what nicotine does is it actually interferes with that brain development and it can chemically and structurally change the makeup of the brain. Um, so as you can see, it lowers impulse control, um, it disrupts judgment, it can lead to depression or mood disorders, um, and also disrupts those brain circuits that control learning. Um, something else that's really concerning here is we know that nicotine um, can prime the brain for addiction to other drugs. Um, so if you use nicotine, you're more likely to go on to use other substances like marijuana or cocaine. Um, so we, really prevention with nicotine is so, so key here. Okay, these are some frequently asked questions that I get. Um, so one is, well, are e cigarettes safe? What about for adults? Um, so what the Centers for Disease Control says, you should never start using e-cigarettes if you don't use tobacco products, especially for young people, especially for pregnant women. But you should not use e-cigarettes if you don't use tobacco products. Um, if you use tobacco products, um, there's a chance that e-cigarettes are not as harmful. There's not as many harmful carcinogens. Um, so there is potential for harm reduction there. Um, again, we still need a lot more research on this. Um, and, and the reason that, we, that the CDC is saying this stuff is safer is cigarettes are just very harmful. They kill about one in two of their users. Um, cigarettes are the leading cause of preventable death in Massachusetts, in the United States, and worldwide. Um, and, and so really anything, like I said, e-cigarettes are likely not as harmful. Um, something else to keep in mind that uh, secondhand vape, so if, if you vape and you exhale and someone is by you and they inhale that, that's not safe either. Um, so that's not safe to inhale because you're inhaling that aerosol as well. 
Um, we know e-cigarettes, they can also explode. They cause unintended injuries. There's been second degree burns. Um, there's nicotine poisoning. Um, whether nicotine poisoning, do you get it through your skin? Or maybe even if you're vaping too much. Um, we know young people are doing these challenges as well, called jewel challenges of, um, of inhaling the jewel, um, a couple of them at once. And, you know, trying to do a lot, do these competitions, um, and they can get nicotine poisoning from this. They can vomit, they can get nausea. Um, and, and so that's something that, that we see with too much nicotine as well. Um, so I, I really briefly mentioned this. Um, I'm here to concentrate on the nicotine in these e-cigarettes and vapes. But as I talked about, um, vape, vapes can be used to vape marijuana or even other illicit drugs as well. Um, so those, those open systems that I talked about that you can refill, you can really put whatever you want in those. So you can put marijuana in those. Um, closed systems like the pods that the Juul has, um, you can actually open those up and put whatever you want in those as well. Um, there's also pods that come with marijuana already in them that are compatible with Juul. Um, so again, you people might not be just vaping um, nicotine, it could be other substances as well. So what are some signs of young people or people in general vaping? Um, this stuff has a very sweet scent. Um, and maybe like a bath and body works, um, just something abnormally sweet. You also might not get too much of a scent either. Um, I like to say if the boy's bathroom smells good, then probably a sign that people are vaping because that's not supposed to smell good. Um, also to keep an eye out for unfamiliar products like USBs. I have a picture of that jewel pod right up there. Check out for the caps of those. Um, I, I know this morning I saw an empty jewel pod like right by my apartment. So, so, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, and finally, signs of nicotine addiction. Um, if, if people are, if these youth are changing their behaviors, um, if, if they can't pay attention, if they're irritable, difficulty concentrating, um, that could be a sign of nicotine addiction. So, so really something to look out for there. Um, so I get the question, where are young people getting these products? Um, but this is actually some confiscated products from um, Stoughton High School. So that's some, so this is kind of what Stoughton youth are using. Um, and where are they getting them? This is from the Stoughton survey. Um, people say that they borrowed them from someone. Um, someone else purchased it for them. Uh, they purchased it directly from a convenience store. Um, got it some other way, or they purchased it at a vape shop or smoke shop. Um, and those that did purchase these at, right from the store itself, um, I mean, that's showing that even though they're not 21 or older, that these youth are still able to buy these at convenience stores. So that's something that's concerning. So real quickly, I just want to talk about how the industry is targeting young people. I actually think it's one of the most important messages here. Um, it's by no accident that young people are vaping. This was done on purpose by the industry. Um, and you know, the tobacco industry forever has known that the teenagers, that the younger they start using nicotine, the more likely they are to get addicted, addicted for life. So these teens are actually um, the tobacco industry's most profitable customers because once you hook them young, then they are more likely to get hooked on nicotine and continue using the products. Um, addiction is really a great way for these companies to make money. It's plain and simple like that. Um, so I'm gonna fly through these slides because I only have a few minutes left. But basically the industry, they make their products sweet, cheap, and easy to get. Um, and when I say easy to get, I mean everywhere. They want the stuff to be everywhere. Um, and we know it's sweet that there's over 8,000 flavors of these products. Um, and we know a leading reason young people are using these products is because of the flavors. It makes it seem harmless. Mango, who would think there's nicotine in there or that there's other harmful chemicals? It seems like that seems beautiful. Or unicorn kisses, stuff like that. Um, so here's just some examples, blue slushy um, that we're seeing in some products. Um, also, 
these e-cigarette companies are able to discount their products because they know youth are really price sensitive. Um, so just examples, I have brought, I bought some products for a dollar or two dollars online, free shipping. Um, so, so price, we really do need to increase the price of these products to make it less accessible to young people. Finally, easy to get. Um, the industry wants this stuff to be everywhere. They want it to be in every corner store. Um, they want it to be online um, because they want to normalize their products. They want it to seem, they want people to see this stuff everywhere. Um, and I can say I see Jewel sold here signs or Jewel here signs in like every convenience store that I walk by. Um, and finally, just for Jewel, um, people tend to think that they only targeted adults, but they really did target young people. Um, this was their launch campaign, Vaporized. Um, like Jewel and these other e-cigarette companies, like they really market to young people. And this was Jewel's launch campaign. It was young, attractive people, bright colors. So that's something to talk to your kids about as well. Real quick, um, I'm just actually going to talk about um, where you guys get more information. So head to getoutrage.org. Um, that's the first site here, Surgeon General, Centers for Disease Control. Um, getoutrage.org, here it is. You can basically learn more information from the state um, about what you can do. And I think quickly, I just want to talk about the youth campaign um, that was recently launched by the state. Um, and we'll have that video play right now. And I think we'll probably close out after here, but um, really we want to educate our young people. Um, so let's play that video. Did you know vape pods can have as much nicotine as 20 cigarettes? And nicotine can harm your brain, including your memory and ability to learn. Vapes and cigarettes may be different, but they have the same dangers for young people. Get the facts at mass.gov slash vaping. Perfect. So I have run out of time. My presentation is normally longer, um, but definitely encourage you guys um, to go to getoutrage.org for more information. And here's my contact info as well. And I'll um, make sure that this, the quit vaping stuff is out there for everyone as well. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.